Many people were introduced to the music of Scott Joplin through the movie The Sting, but in his day, Joplin was a successful songwriter who aspired to write more serious works. The Tin Pan Alley Rag, Mark Saltzman's play with music, imagines a meeting between Joplin and Irving Berlin at a time when Joplin was trying to find a producer or at least a publisher for his opera, Trimonitia. It's now being performed at the Roundabout's Laura Pell's Theater on 46th Street off 6th Avenue, and joining me now to talk about it are Michael Boatman, who plays Scott Joplin. Hello. And musical director Michael Patrick Walker. Welcome to our show, and I hope this doesn't get too confusing because you're both named Michael, and so is the actor who plays Irving Berlin, Michael Terrio. And there is one more Michael in the production, uh, Michael McCormick, who plays uh, Irving Berlin's assistant, Teddy Snyder. So. so what happened during rehearsals when somebody said Michael? I think we, they broke us down to Michael's one through four or Michael B, Michael W, Michael, you know. And just for our purposes now, we just decided that he could, Michael Patrick Walker, our musical director, shall be Michael Patrick. It's very but formal, I, but yes, it will suffice. But uh, a, and you'll be Michael. And I'll be Michael. Now, the con- it gets confusing when you realize my middle name is also Patrick, so. <laughs> 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 what, did you know much about Scott Joplin before you took this role? You know, like I think many Americans, uh, I knew about the sting from the movie, and uh, I ha- we had sort of an old, you know, out of tune piano in my house as a kid growing up in Chicago, and I do remember sitting there trying to play it on on uh, you know various annoying occasions, and so uh, I, I, it is very funny now to actually be playing this part and and and, and playing the part, playing. if you will, you know, you know, fake playing thanks to the you know auspices of Michael Patrick Walker. Michael Patrick, uh, didn't Joplin live in New York for a time? Uh, it's he true. died here, didn't he? He did. Uh, I believe I believe he's actually buried in Queens, if I'm remembering that, this correctly. Um, but yeah, he. Uh, thus the premise of the play is at least theoretically possible uh, because he and Berlin would have been in New York in a very small industry at the time. And uh, I understand his publisher was in the same building. That's that apparently true, in. yes. That, uh, so they would have met on the stairs, if nothing else. Very possibly. They may have passed each other. They, you know, they may have actually said hello, hard to say. Yeah. Do you think that they would have been aware of each other? Because they were both called the king of ragtime at the time. I, I mean, I would have to think that if, even if they never met, I'm sure that they at least would be aware of one another. And Berlin at that time was, while not the Irving Berlin we eventually came to know, certainly still very well known, and Joplin, of course quite well known at that point. Well, he'd already written Alexander's Ragtime Band Absolutely. At, at the time of this play, 1915, because he'd written Alexander's Rag, Ragtime Band in 1911, mm-hmm. and that was really the big breakthrough for him. Right. But it, sure. it's not a rag. It's not, I guess, technically considered no. a rag, is it? It's sort of rag-infused yeah, it's, pop it's, music of the day, right? It, in fact, we have a clip sure. in, in which Michael has... As Scott Joplin explains the concept of syncopation to a German symphonic conductor. Let's listen to it. White, European, serious, see? One, two, three, four, strong, weak, strong, weak. Now I'll add the right hand, stick into the same style. Strong, weak, strong, weak. Just an on the beat, lockstep march. But... If I play the left hand like I've been doing it, and the right hand gets a little out of step, gets a little rebellious, and starts putting the stress on the wrong beats, we fly to a raggy new world. (laughs) Because now the right hand has syncopation, an African rhythm. Right. That's the black part. And that was you, Michael, with James Judy. Yes, the wonderful James Judy, who plays Ernst, um, the symphonic uh, conductor that Joplin met in real life, and that, that is actually sort of recounted in the play. And uh, who pronounces it zincopation. Zincopation, yeah. <laughs> what I love about that scene, is, and, and even from the very first time I read it, is that it is such, and it's, this is to due to the skills, obviously, of Mark Saltzman, the playwright, but it's such a, a beautiful description of all the pop music that sort of came to follow you know the mixture of of the rhythms uh, you know the african the european and and how and i just think that's brilliant because syncopation really is the basis of jazz uh and uh, and what makes jazz swing Mm -hmm. and then pretty much all the popular music that followed in america yeah although ragtime only had a limited run Mm. Right, but it was sort of the pop music of its day, right? I mean, yeah. it was, you know. And as you say, sort of the foundation of so many other things that came after. Uh, what I enjoy very much about that, too, is it's rather an esoteric concept to someone who's perhaps not musically inclined, syncopation, but it's such an important concept to mm-hmm. ragtime into the play. 
Well, we're starting to get more and more plays that are explaining these complicated things. We had 33 variations Mm -hmm. explaining how Beethoven wound up writing a a series of of variations at the end of his life. Now we have an explanation of syncopation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm going to start uh, sending little (laughs) notes to playwrights to say, well, you know, I'm a bit confused about fugues. (laughs)